Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast, and I'm your host, T.W. And of course, with me is the man with the plan, the one, the only, the owner, the operator of the Impact Lounge, the man who lets, who says ladies are free up until 11 o'clock, but the doors don't open until 10.59. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for BQ. BQ, ladies and gentlemen, say what's up to the people. <laughs> you always got some weird <laughs> intro that has to do with all this bartending and shit like that. I'm, I've, I haven't drank in years, so it's, like, it's, so, it's so odd, man. But, well, um, it's okay. Listen, slum lords don't live in their projects. Okay, you don't have to drink. You just you just open up a place for us to do our debauchery. Okay, there we that's, go. And and that's what we have here. Okay, the Impact Lounge is a place for us to do our debauchery. Okay, and so that's uh so so here we are. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, hey, what's up, everybody? I hope everyone's good. Uh, we got a real special episode this week. Before we t- dive into Impact and the review and the news, and there's a little bit of news to talk about. Uh, before we dive into all that. We have a really special show plan. Um, we got my buddy Rick coming on today. Uh, he's here right now. I'm going to give you, uh, he's going to give you his background. And we know that as Impact Wrestling fans, people love to know what does Impact do to promote for their shows? And what, uh, it, it's one of those things that no one has ever seen to know the, know the answer to. Uh, we, we've seen them do Impact Plus shows, and, and you know, obviously in the last couple of years, they've been touring and bouncing around and doing different platforms. And everyone's like, well, how do they put butts in seats? And um, there's obviously this set of tapings coming up, May Day, they're calling it, and uh, the Under Siege show. So there's, there's a lot of really good things going on, and right now we want to give you guys an opportunity to hear a little bit about behind the scenes with all that. So, uh, Rick, uh, thanks for coming on with us. Uh you know, give us uh, give our listeners a little bit of a background of what you do and all that good stuff. Well, well first and foremost, thank you, gentlemen, for having me on the Impact Lounge. Uh, long awaited debut for myself here on the Impact Lounge. Uh, Brian, I know you and I, we, we've been kind of running in the same circles for years now. And uh, the first time that we've been able to do a show together. So I'm absolutely thrilled. Uh, once again, thank you for the honor here. Uh, as you said, I just recently got to do some very close network with Impact and helping them promote a set of shows coming to my neck of the woods here in the Cincinnati tri-state area. Uh, so, yeah, you said some of the listeners, they want to get some of that behind the scenes, the nuts and bolts of, of what's going on. I got to live it firsthand. Uh, let me say it was an incredible experience. I, I know you guys have a lot of questions. We're going to deep dive into all that. Uh, but a little bit about myself, you know, I, I hope that I might be familiar to some of your audience. Recognize uh, me to order the beat of the V, Richard Bronson Vickery from the Hameen Media Group, where you can catch me regularly. I've been rocking from the get-go over there on the Monday morning locker room. Uh, and also, you know, we always, we're, we're always in, the, in those hot seats, the, the musical chairs, if you will, moving from different shows. So now I'm, I'm regularly co-hosting the Light the Fuse, the AEW review show with Ben Hameen. Uh, but yeah, it, I think the only other show I've been on the talk impact was our is our very own impact attack. That actually was the oh, first right. show that got it going for the Hameen Media Group. That was you know where it all kind of blossomed from. Big Ray and and Ben Hameen started way way back back when uh, WrestleZone.com was a relevant thing. I, I know they're still out there. They're taking over. What was it mandatory or something like that? Yeah, that, that's how I learned about Ben Hameen was on WrestleZone. Yeah, you know that's when you know. The likes of yourself, me, and so many you know that we that we put under the uh, the hashtag hashtag Hameen Army kind of came together. Started from those WrestleZone days, and we kind of branched out and started doing our own thing. and And it was the encouragement there for everybody. It was kind of in our group, you included there, and, and you started running. You know, you, you found, you know, your passion inside of professional wrestling. You, you found what was kind of lacking in promotional work. If you know, if you will, we're going to talk about here and, and taking it to the people through the podcast with the, with the impact lounge. Right. So yeah, yeah uh, podcasting, I, I guess, you know, certain five, seven years ago in podcasting, I was telling you gentlemen, just before we went, went on air, hit the record button here. I just celebrated one year of promoting independent shows myself, my own promotion, the professional wrestling Alliance. Uh, and it, you know, it's, it's more of an old school, even inside of it, the name itself, we wanted something 
you, you see all these indies, man. They got all these crazy names, you know, everywhere. We wanted some very simplistic, very grand, you know, similar to, you know, grassroots kind of where you had, where your champion could travel. You were working with other promotions. So we wanted something that was very NWA-esque. So we just went with the PWA and we've had great success <laughs> in our first year. It's, it, it's a, a very much a learning experience that it's been in, and we're excited for year two. Uh, I can't say that it's always the easiest, but it, it's the passion that, that holds us and all of us inside of pro wrestling. It's that drug, if you will, the addiction <laughs> that keeps us coming back. And, and all that kind of led me to where we are this past weekend, this past week or so. And then today with my work with impact. So I've, I've seen a lot of your Facebook posts with that promotion. I just wasn't sure what your connection was to it exactly. So now, now I know. Now I yeah, get it. It, it was kind of, you know, how, you know, how it really happened was, and I know Brian, you just recently were in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know if you were, if you had the chance to make it up there, a tremendous event with the squared circle expo group. Yeah. I just uh, talked about it actually a couple of podcasts ago. TW wasn't with me. I was just by myself and I just come back from squared circle. So, uh, and I talked about it a little bit on the show and then just a few days later impacts like, Hey, we're, partnering with these guys for some promotional work and you know i put a tweet i was like yo these are the people to to get with because they i've been to two of the conventions i don't know if they've only they, ever they had, had two they had two okay uh, and they were kind of the first time out they were still dealing with the restrictions of the COVID situation yeah, right i remember that yeah. and, and they still knocked it out of the park but then to come back full go this year was kind of you know the wild west all cups off mm-hmm. they, yeah, they must have had 33 percent and that's a random number, about a third more of wrestlers this time around. I mean, what they had 70, 70, 70 big names coming in from yeah. you know, legends, the current stars and all that. They had 70 coming to Indianapolis there somewhere around. I, and I, this is going to be a low ball if I'm saying it, cause it might even exceed this uh, minimum of 4,000 pro wrestling fanatics attended this oh, thing. Wow. Two days over the yeah. Easter weekend, you know, they had this thing going Friday evenings, all day, Saturday, they put on their own show, the squared circle expo show. Uh, which is a tremendous event. They had some great participation. Uh, those, those guys kill it. So yeah. let, let me let me jump right to let me jump right to a big question, and we can maybe mm-hmm. work backwards from there. You mentioned a number four thousand, and let me ask you, what would it take to get four thousand people into an Impact Wrestling show? You, you know, it's really good. A, a great question on that. It, 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 it's inside professional wrestling. I feel right now, an issue is. All around the business, they're having we're having trouble growing the bubble, right? And in uh, many a cases inside of that, those that are inside of it were inside of our own bubble mm-hmm. that we we I guess you know to speak wrestling terms, a lot of cases, a lot of people think that wrestling is still over. Right. And regularly right. here, oh, it's this great time to be a wrestling yep. fan. It's so yep. there's a lot of it out there. There's a tremendous amount of great content out yep. there, but the consumer isn't there. Right. And until right. we recognize that is, you know, for everybody, even if a fan, I mean, it's all of our jobs to promote professional mm-hmm. wrestling. It is our right. passion, it's our love, and we want it to grow. And when it's stronger all around, it's just better for everyone the crop. You know, I'm right. sure you guys remember the day when you, one of the most funny things you could do, just randomly go out somewhere and you could find yourself in a conversation about pro wrestling. Right. In a, in a passionate conversation, which made it so much more fun. Now it's harder to find those circles, those pockets mm-hmm. of people that want to talk about that. Uh, so we have to get over this notion that it's still this hip thing. Now it, it still yep. can be, it's right. just, it, there is so much more product bang for the buck competition out there mm-hmm. that we need to find ways to put wrestling back on that pedestal. Yeah. And I, and I truly think a lot of times the performers themselves are, they're the ones that are more detrimental, uh, our stars in the, and they're they're right in the way they are thinking. They want to. They're thinking connect with that audience, build that bridge. But we've lost. We've lost where we were growing up, where we were in awe of the superstars. Yeah. There was a separation, and you know, and a lot of people say, you know, just blame social media for that. No, that's just that's just that they're wrongfully using social media. They can mm. promote their star power. Yeah. Without, you know, bringing people on the same level. Yeah, yeah. I think um so. It sounded like, um, you know, kind of in a roundabout way, you know, like what you're saying is that, you know, Impact Wrestling is kind of at the mercy of how wrestling as a whole is doing, which everyone kind of is. But like you mentioned, right, there's the bubble 
and then there's the bubbles within the bubbles, right? And and for whatever reason, right, like impacts bubble, right, is is just like viewed. It's just we've gone along so long with impact being like the the redheaded stepchild, the ugly sister, whatever it is you want to say, right? Like the the uh, the uncool kid at the table, right? But also, and 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 BQ mentions this all the time, right? Like the there's a generation of wrestling fans who doesn't know about LOL TNA. Like I like I was I was saying this the other day. I I, I said I said to I think it was BQ, like. Uh, there's there's a 15 year old wrestling fan right mm -hmm. that was seven or eight years old when Spike TV canceled Impact Wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a there's a and and that was for all intensive purposes, right? Like the true death of the TNA brand where it was unrecoverable, right? But like um, but we've just gone along, right? Like they've never they've just never recovered from all the damage that was done prior to that and the, 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 the perpetual cycle of bad news and all of that. But the truth is we also live in an instant gratification society and nobody's checking for the impact wrestling negativity news from 2014. Nobody's looking that up. You know what I mean? So, so in reality, there's a target market that doesn't know anything about the negative negativity of TNA. They just know that their friends aren't talking about it. So, so I always say like, if I could ask Scott Demore a question, I would say like, dude, what's your pitch to the 15 year old wrestling fan? The, the fan that doesn't know anything about the LOL TNA and didn't follow the Dixie Carter trial. And you know what I mean? Like, like, like what's your pitch to that fan? That, that's what I'm always saying to, um, you know, like, well, that, that's what I'm newly kind of saying is like the question that, you know, T and, uh, excuse me, the impact and impact management needs to answer for themselves. And so to your point, right? Like about like, you know, like the bubbles not growing, like it sounds like you think in order for impact to truly grow, we're going to have to get some new fans in here because the fans here yeah. just ain't messing with it. And I, I think that's a, a real issue across the board inside professional wrestling and going back into that public and you're asking, why, you know, how are these fans getting this information? Why can't we turn on this younger fan base to this great product? I mean, I'm sitting here looking at a handbill in front of me. Just the limited roster that we were able to put on a handout is incredible. Some of the talent that is available inside of Impact Wrestling. We can wake out some of the absolute best from all aspects of professional wrestling. If, if you're into the in-ring product, if you're into the technical style, any sort of style, the high flyers women's wrestling they have it here the character which me I, i'm one of those old school i mm -hmm. want personas i want right. over the top personas and storylines they have that in impact now again we get back to that bubble it can be very cancerous so when you yeah. do have some younger fans you have some of these people that want to believe that they're oh so smarter than the wrestling gods and will sit there and undermine the efforts that are being made just not by an impact by an mlw or right. certainly we see it even with the, the big times with the with wwe with with uh, all elite wrestling. Mm -hmm. So when I go approach these things and I went for, and teaming up with the Squared Circle Expo crew, they have already got their fingers on the absolute pulse of the bubble, especially mm -hmm. in this area, you know, saying, okay. it, I mean, look, I mean, PQ coming all the way from the West, you know, and the, the travel in for this convention they had was incredible, but they're looking at the heartland that, you know, those, the Midwest states that they're drawing from. They have a connection with those people. When I, using my expertise, my background in marketing, I wanted to try to expand that bubble. TW, I went with it from the mindset you're saying, okay, can I get some new kids hooked on this thing? As when we were kids, to find those moments. And it was, you know, sure, we all saw it on television and that was amazing, but it usually goes back to those moments that we actually went there and saw it and experienced live that truly hooked us that we fell in love with this. So when I go out and you know, I took a day, it was last Sunday. And I, I started in Northern Kentucky where this event is at. It's a brand new, beautiful facility. The uh, Promo West Live Ovation with Ovation. Great the, facility uh, there. I started on, on that building. What's that? 
uh, what, how, how many could that building hold set up for wrestling? I'm not exactly sure what the configurations, what we okay. are talking, I mean, they can get right, a few right, thousand right. in there for this okay. thing. It, cool. It's still under construction. Right. Uh, so at its full capacity, but it is beautiful. So I, Cause, I start cause impact will set it up for 500. <laughs> they'll set it up. I mean, they're pushing, they're pushing for it. You know, yeah. it, it, sometimes that's not a bad thing because yeah. you, you want to have that, that intimacy, which is amazing. And you want it to look packed the way you're filming that. You thing. want it to look packed. Yes, I agree. And you know, that's one of the things that, you know, we look at for our indie shows on a on small level as I am. I don't go book a huge gymnasium. It's going to have all this open room and echo. I right. look for an intimate place that's going to look packed with an incredible energy. Totally and that's agree. fine. You know, some of, you know, for me, and I think some of the best visuals, going back to when Raw started, when it started small and it had the rugness. Sometimes it's a little too crisp for me yeah. in my taste today's. Uh, you know, you, you had the feelings of, you know, maybe the, the greatest grassroots growing campaign ever that will never be duplicated is ECW and how mm -hmm. those arenas felt. Yes. You know, they were big ass houses, yeah, but it felt yeah. that way. It felt larger. Like, and that's you know, it, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I think about that all the time, right? When I'm watching like the impact shows, um, even from like Philadelphia, right? That Philadelphia crowd they had for that last set of tapings was an excellent crowd. They did their best to prop up those segments, but I'm watching this and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, you know, this, um, th this crowd, th this is a great crowd. Like I thought it was packed in there for those shows, but the crowd's not like that ECW crowd that's hanging over the side of the rail and like, oh, Francine, let me touch you. You know what I mean? Like, you know, what I mean? which you don't totally want. But I mean, but by the same token, like you just want that excitement, that energy. Like I used to always be so annoyed. Um, you know, the the NXT Black and Gold era was. We're we're all going to look back on this in five, 10, 20 years and be like, damn, that was special. Just because, like the 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 audience was the most important part of that show. The audience was what made that show special. You know what I mean? And and like me, as somebody who, you know, I'm in it for the stories and the personalities, I'm like, yo, shut up. I don't need to hear you singing and chanting and all that other stuff, but it made the product feel special. And there's, again, now we're talking, this was on, you know, what, since like 2013, whatever, 2012, 2013, all the way up to now-ish. I mean, that black and gold era really ended you know, let's say two years ago. And like, so that's a generation of wrestling fans who grew up thinking that's how you watch wrestling. You know what I mean? Right. And so I, I, I feel like if anything, like it, Impact needs to find a way to duplicate that energy. You know what I mean? Duplicate that, that energy. That, that takes time. And yeah. it's going to take finding the right markets. Right. And regularly visiting those. And, and it's, it, it just does help, but you have to have the efforts inside of social media. Uh, like coming here to the Cincinnati market, if we can grow, you know, if, if myself and the Squared Circle Expo guys, if we can get a couple, you know, grow up by a couple hundred to a couple thousand. But what is the retention rate? Right. How can we hold those fans so they're excited? And how, how do you measure that? How do you measure the retention rate? There's a number of ways that, that you can do that. Um. A lot of just different, you know, there's different systems that you can put in the place. Uh, obviously, trying to set up some campaigns in the house to immediately trigger some social media feedback from them. Still the old school of, of old school emailers because you have a direct contact with them yeah. in a sorts. And, and again, just trying to promote more, not just visit us on social media, but to, to try to ask them to get more involved and tracking with hashtag Cincinnati. Uh, I've, you know, I've always been a big fan too. Hey, put out some big matches and have these cities kind of in competitions for them where you'll come back. That yes. way you're measuring and you're a enticing excitement. Right, 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 right. Yes. I think like, so So let's go into a little bit more about the, the methods. Um, the methods. Tell me more about like, how does... How does uh, Squared Circle Expo, so it's called, how, how does Squared Circle Expo, tell us a little bit about the machine. You know, like what's the method for drumming up interest for a show like those, like, like Those guys, show? You know, see, I think this is the first time that I've really worked with them. And it, it, this is kind of funny, but those guys, their roots, they have actually, they have done other conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, Ed Gonzalez, who was my main contact that we had partnered up, that we had seen each other a few times and we're working on the fly, getting the flyers out and all that, the handbills out. 
he has a, a deep background in this. Him, his crew had been running some horror conventions, horror hound for many, many years. And they had five of those running. So they, they, they knew how this worked and it's a hustle. And that, and that's absolutely what they do. They, they, they go out there, they use all their connections. Uh, they they just, they get people excited about this stuff. They, they hustle on it. It's pretty funny. It, it, it was actually them that inspired me to get involved into this. Unknowingly, did they know that they do this? But they had put out uh, a post asking many of those locally here in the Cincinnati Tri-State area that are inside the independent, in the independent bubble here, uh, did they know that Impact Wrestling was coming? And this was like a little over two weeks before that the show coming up. So hell, oh, 10 days ago. And a lot of people, no idea. Right. No idea. I was one of them. Didn't know. Right. Didn't know impact was coming. I would say if you know if there was 50 people in there, 47 didn't know. War wrestling knew because war wrestling, you they bring they take the ring down there for impact to use. Okay. Uh so at that. Squared Circle Expo got involved through their connections. A uh, big one was Heath, you know, because, and the Good Brothers actually, you know, got them, got Ed in contact with Josh Matthews. Mm -hmm. My end of it is I saw that conversation and went to my contacts. I went to Ben Hameen and said, Where, give me my move. Who do I contact? Uh, within a couple minutes, I get a reply from Ben. I've got Josh Matthews' phone number. I contact him, and I'm thinking, you know, shot in the dark. Is he is he going to answer back? And I just kind of shoot him a, my resume, say, hey, I'd love to get involved with this for you. I'd like to talk with you to lay out a game plan. And within an hour or so, I'm talking to Matthews, and then I'm talking to Ross, and we and you know they're thinking, you know, they're well, lay some stuff out. Let's get some things going. They're they're eager for this, but you know they just don't want to make sure that they're just bringing someone on that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Some fan right. got a hold of them, right? Uh, and I was pretty aggressive. I said, "Now here's everything I got. I already got plans. We need to get rolling now." And Ed agreed with that, and we were off and running the next morning with it. So this uh, this whole connection between Squared Circle and Impact that actually stemmed from Heath and the Good Brothers uh, like for them for them getting with Impact. Uh, because oh, okay. because Squared Circle had worked with them for their convention, right? And, and they had seen the amazing job that was being done, and to see these four thousand fans, and you know they're sitting there thinking, how can we use this? Yeah, that's what I was getting at. So they were they were kind of the middle middlemen. Yeah, they 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 were the ones that that got Ed and his crew involved from Squared Circle, uh, and mine was getting a contact through Ben Hamid. Right, uh, so, right. So in that, so they've got Squared Circle's got their wheels turning. I've got my wheels turning and then after they have their conversations with the impact people, I have my conversations. I get a message from Ed Gonzalez. He's like, Hey brother. He's like, let me give you a call. I know about your meeting with, with Matthews. Let's get on the same page. I was excited for this. Uh, I've known Ed for, for a while here, seen him at some shows. We've had some conversations. Great guy. One of the best times you're ever going to be around. I mean, it just, he has a lot of fun and he loves pro wrestling. So he's just great guy to hang out with and all that. Uh, hell he's been in 25 years. Stu he studied under shark boy. You know, he was one of like sharks first classes and all that. Uh, he's been there, done that. He's seen, you know, the convention, how to draw audiences. I was receptive. I was all gone. Oh, let's go. Let's do this thing. And we, you know, immediately agreed. said, Hey, you got the 25 years in wrestling. I've only got this five years here, but I've got 20 years in marketing. Let's let's mesh these worlds together. All right, all right. Real quick, real quick, real quick. If you guys are enjoying this conversation, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to so subscribe to this channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page. And if you uh, got questions about this conversation we're having, go ahead and drop your comments down below. We will get back to them. Uh, we'll address them in the future. All right. So Rick, so you so you make the connection. You know, you hear back from Josh and they're like, okay, let's, let's go. So, so what's the plan? What's the plan? I mean, like, you know, you're like, all right, we're, we're, we're about to hit the ground running. What are you doing first? Like, you know, you said you have a plan drawn up. 
What's give us an outline of like, you know, kind of, you know, you don't obviously want to, you know, spill too much of your secrets, but we're here to give fans an inside look of, you know, what the what the efforts are of somebody who has, you know, boots on the ground um, trying to help do the thing that we all love. Right. Is, is, is trying to get impact wrestling, get the word out there. So talk to us a little bit about like, you know, what was the plan? What was the approach? What was the idea? You know, how did you get it get it going? Well, you know, again, going back, teaming up on Squared Circle Expo, we, I realized where their expertise are. What we do, me and Ed, in our conversations, they've already got a connection base with thousands of wrestling fans that could, you know, realistically make this trip to, back to the Cincinnati Tri-State area for two days of, of impact wrestling. I'm going back to what we were talking about, growing the bubble, going to people that are looking for some incredible entertainment, maybe something outside of their box, that could potentially hook new fans, especially for impact, but wrestling as a whole. So I, I'm going to have to really step outside of our box here. Uh, so as my first calls, I have local tie-ins with these. I'm going for, I'm going for the biggest home runs I can hit because we have got a short amount of time to do this. We've got a turn turnaround of two weeks. And I know that I've got Moose and Deanna Brazo coming in for uh, a Thursday and a Friday spot. They were just in on the 28th and 29th. So we've got to hurry up and get this stuff done. I, I can't sit and kind of negotiate. I need yeses or hard noes. Real funny, I'll tell you some of the people that I ran down, but I got a lot of hard noes simply because you're not WWE. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't even entertain the count outside of who? Right. Oh, we know wrestling, mm -hmm. you're not WWE, no thanks. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I got to interject here. The first time I ever went to the, the Impact Zone in Orlando, uh, it's not – if you actually go to Orlando and look to where Impact where, where Impact tapes and where now they do AEW Dark, if you're there for the first time, you don't know where the hell to go. It, it's actually really confusing. So what do I do? I go to an employee. I said, hey, where's the, where's the wrestling at? And she's like, you mean like the Royal Rumble? And I was like, and I just like the Royal Rumble. She's like, yeah, it's coming here next year. And I mean, I, it, I went in a probably 10 months prior to the Royal Rumble. So it's like in the park, this random person, oh, yeah, well, the Royal Rumble's coming. But I was like, no, the TNA, the wrestling you have here, right. no clue what I was talking about. So <laughs> it, <laughs> you know, the brand recognition is not the same. Sometimes you run into that. And, in, and I learned real quick, instead of being offended by it, especially as you're sitting there trying to promote something else and you want to get people excited about that, just embrace it. Yeah. If that's what they are going to use to relate to professional wrestling, that's good. Now you've got the hook on them. Mm -hmm. At least you got their attention. You've got a conversation going. So even side of that, you know, I, without even saying opening and saying, Hey, impact wrestling, I'll sell an experience first. You know, for me, what the reason, and, and I stand by 100%, pro wrestling is the greatest form of entertainment going today. No matter what you love, no matter what your flavor is, you know, if, if you like athletics, we got that. If you like comedy, we've got that. If you like love stories, we've got that. You know, just suspenseful drama, we have that. All areas of the stage of theater, is inside of professional wrestling. Across the board of entertainment, you can find a sample of that. Something that is going to not just satisfy everyone, but excite everybody. There is something inside of professional wrestling. And that's what we need to you know, project to a potential new audience. And, and those are my openings, you know. And, I, and as I was making around, I started saying, I started in Northern Kentucky. I walked across the bridge. I went to our Banks area, which is our entertainment district next to the Red Stadium. Uh, you know, God bless their souls this year. They're trying. They're only three <laughs> wins for our Reds, but <laughs> you, you got to give them a for the young team, a for effort on the field. Ownership's not doing them any favors. Well, I scalped a ticket for four dollars that day and wow. walked the entire stadium. Wow! Uh, for those <laughs> that were there, handing out these handbills. Nice. Uh, I went from there. I went to our Fountain Square, which is a hub of activity. And had conversations. I and I ended up walking all the way clear to the other side of the city to our casino, to the Hard Rock Casino that we have here. Stopping along the way, all in all, I probably covered like a square radius, five six miles. But it took me four and a half hours because I'm stopping and having these conversations, trying mm -hmm. to tell people, you know, that it, it is. And I'm just on the way up. I was even talking about the hotbed of that we have here in pro wrestling. Talking about the independence and and the young talents 
that they're going to see and then putting over the talents that they might recognize on the show and what they can expect. So that, so that, that was so, so like, so in these okay. conversations, in, the, in, in these conversations, you're, you are, are you just trying to get them to take the flyer? Are you trying to get like a ticket sold? Like when you're walking up to people, canvassing the stadium, walking the streets, you know, do, do, it's, doing, it's, doing I, the hard work. What, what is your goal when from, you interact with people? I'm going to say 60 seconds up to probably five minutes of conversation. Okay. And I'm judging this on their interests. Mm-hmm. If anyone can hand these out all day. Right. Right. But where are they, are they going to go in their pocket and throw it away later? Are they just right. looking for a spot when you're not? Did you do something to at least give them a bit of interest to hang on and check out, check out what this is or to wonder what's out there. And a lot of times too, you know, with, with the young kids, you got to find, like with my nephews, I get them excited about frozen because I can relate it to superhero stuff. Mm, okay. If you see kids bring that kind of stuff up, look what they're wearing. I would, obviously, like if it was around the Reds, I'm getting a lot of Reds gear. So even then, I, that helped me because I could stay away from the Cardinal fans because they're not going to come right. back and go to six. So I'm wasting the time on them. Right. Uh, but if it's not about, you know, you try to read the, like what activities are they doing? How can you relate those things? That's what I'm saying. What makes pro wrestling so great is it's relatable to almost mm. every area. Now, with the older fans, maybe they've seen some of these people that are with Impact, or their attitudes or their personas are relatable, where, where, you know, they have maybe soured on a WWE because of, you know, so kid-friendly here, where this is still great family entertainment, but not as cookie cutter, right? And you can excite people. So you're looking for those. So you want to have the time, take the time, do it right, have a conversation with them. That was my strategies with hitting, hitting the people. And I've got a whole week ahead of me still to do that again. When it came to having Moose and Deanna in, those are where we got to go for our big, our big buck sales here. So I immediately, I went to the top radio shows. I went to the top TV shows and I h- h- chased hard after local press. So when you <laughs> said earlier that you got a lot of no's, were you referring to, people that you were reaching out and speaking with just on the street, or are you referring to the radios and the, the TV the, stations? The corporate side, the radio and all that. Okay. Uh, I'll share one out. I was just talking about being in the Red Stadium. I wasn't invited there. I scouted that ticket, and <laughs> I, I reached out to a, uh, an old friend of mine that works in promotions for the Reds, and it's you know no fault of his on this. He, he tried his best on it. And in his – and this wasn't a no on WWE, but it was – we usually, and I was thinking, they had a businessman special on Thursday, or business day special. Maybe not going on, but there's a lot of kids and stuff there, I know. So, well, can I get one involved? Maybe throw out a first pitch or something. And I get the, there it was, those spots and any kind of involvement on the field are usually re- reserved for big corporate sponsor or season ticket holders. All right. No problem. Went to our local hockey team, minor league, ECHL, uh, Cincinnati Cyclones, in the playoffs. Thought it'd be pretty damn cool to have one of them drop a puck. That's one where I get a hard no. We're owned by the building. Contracts with WWE. Wow. Mm. So, I mean, that was, you know, the guy I was talking to was really excited. He actually knew about Impact Wrestling. Right. Was a wrestling fan, but just because of their ties and the contracts with the building. And I'm sure you guys have seen that before, you know, where they're, when the companies are arguing about buildings or pay-per-view mm. distributors and all that. So, yeah, and I had a couple radio personalities that uh, we usually just deal with WWE guys. We're going to pass. Mm-hmm. All right. But I found bigger ones. You know, and it, 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 was, it was funny, you know, when one door closed, a, a bigger and better window opened. Mm-hmm. So what, what were some of these windows? Who, who said yes? Well, our, our first big one um, was over at ES, our local ESPN radio affiliate, 1530. And we got two top dogs in sports talk here in, in the area. Um, and one of them is Mo Egger. And he was very welcoming. Nice. Uh, and it, but it was a little bit hard, too, because getting in, you know, actually, you had the opening day, the first round of the draft on Thursday. Great, yeah. you know, of course, follow up on Friday. That was dominating a lot of sports talk, especially on sports radio and just general news in the area. Uh, but easy sell there, man. Got a former NFL player in Moose. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, that, and that's what I was going to get at. That's probably a very easy opening sell. Like, hey, here's his back. Obviously, with Deanna, you probably couldn't sell her in that manner right away. But Moose, I mean, that's just right there for you. Yeah. Well, 
you you sell Deanna is come on, she is a very beautiful person. Uh, but then you you know you let them know, hey, she can kick ass. Now she's one of the fiercest women inside of this industry, and and she actually she has a, a tremendous personality. Great great interview. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to to hit many of the appearances just because of having to catch a flight to Mexico for AAA. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw I saw some tw- uh, clips on Twitter of her at uh, uh, triple was it is it Triple Mania? Is that what they yeah. did? Yeah, it was a big uh, is is a big show. So I saw some clips of like it was her and uh, like uh, Andrade and Taya all in the same match. So so yeah, so she definitely. So this was just past uh, this past weekend, the NFL Draft weekend, that they were doing the promotions. Yep, so we had Deanna with us Thursday. So we were with Mo Egger of uh, ESPN for uh, 1530. He was actually out on site. So we're out actually in a sports bar that has this great crowd there, you know, to, you know, coming in to check out his show about NFL talk. And right. we get to plug wrestlers in there. Nice. So again, perfect. now we're that, that, ourselves that's up so to another perfect. audience. And I, uh, listen, I, I work for a big network. And I can tell you that when you're putting together like big shows like that, you are looking for guests and you're looking for some sort of tie-in and some sort of relevancy. And like what you just pitched is absolutely perfect. Because if we're looking for somebody to, you know, fill this 15 minute slot, you know, in this particular quarter hour or whatever, and we're like, oh, pff, you got a guy who, you know, played, you know, what, seven years in the league, you know, oh yes, come on. Talk to us about draft day, talk to us about preparation. You know what I mean? And then, you know, and then before you go, what are you here pitching? You know what I mean? Like, cause everybody's pitching something and like, it, it's just, it's a perfect sell. Well, you, you know, there with Mo, they, he did a, a, a great job of making the whole conversation about wrestling and oh, nice. the draft. He kind of tied everything together. Oh. Mm-hmm. Really uh, so cool. they, there were some great conversations there. Great exposure for us. So, I, so we do the radio there. Uh, so then also our number one, <coughs> You know, I'm going to say probably just number one show, but it's a morning show with our Fox affiliate, Fox 19 now. This one was, you know, I had to go bang on their door for a while. Uh, I had to go down there physically. The phone calls, emails weren't getting me anywhere. You, you know this, and you know, in, inside of me, sometimes you show up. <laughs> and it got to the point I was not leaving that waiting room until I got the okay to put them on the show. Wow, nice. And... That deal got struck Thursday morning at 4.55 a.m. Wow. Eastern time. Wow. wow. You know what? It happens like that because it'll be like, yo, we had the chef from XYZ restaurant was going to come on and do a cooking demonstration. He has COVID. He's bailed now. Well, we need well, something well, to fill this Because, you know, the producer of that show, she's in the morning. So she's off by like 10, 10 a.m. Right. No, but she wanted us there that Thursday and they had just gotten in town and I'm like, well, let's, let's do tomorrow. Let's do tomorrow. And it's like, unless it's absolutely, she said, no, we'll do tomorrow. So that one was a little nerve wracking, but you just got to stay on it and you just keep pushing. But when we got to the station, it was an incredible experience. Then it opened up, you know, red carpet roll, you know, we were going right in, taking care of you in there. We we actually, it was funny though. You say that because we, we walk in the studio and we get positioned into our spot on the rotation and they're over with the local cooks <laughs> doing that spot. And it's really cool for those that haven't been in able that haven't been able to experience that. It is a whirlwind. Yep. It's really, it is incredible to watch it because boom, they're over at the cooking station. They were over there doing, it was a shrimp scampi day, national shrimp scampi day. So they got that going. The garlic oh, smelled nice. incredible in there. Yeah, of course. Boom, right over the weather, boom, the traffic. And then boom, they're over to Miss Finley and Moose ready to go. Oh, man, that's so dope. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's really amazing when you go to, like, a local TV studio, especially, like, the amount of stuff they do in, like, a 10-foot area. Oh, yeah. You know what they, I mean? It's just had, like, oh, this is they, the weather section. I thought the studio was so much bigger. Well, so, they had just switched to their automated stuff about a year ago, so it's all on the track system. So it's right. boom, hitting you around. Yeah. Um. So let's, let's spin this. So as of now, is your, is your work – promoting this event all done i would say the fun part is because you know <laughs> the, the appearances and then you know after we we did uh the the fox now morning show thing then i went out to a local hotspot. we went to a, a great communal like bar food area uh you can go over and check out you know my page on facebook richard bronson vickery i think i've got them i'm gonna be putting them up on twitter at the real rbv we had moose sit down and he took on a food challenge that we've got here 
called the yard burrito. This thing is like, it measures a yard. That's three feet. Wow. Weighs over three pounds. I mean, it, it's incredible. That's a picture you sent me, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's whew, it, it's a big boy. And then later that night, Squared Circle Expo also set up. We had a, a, the more traditional autograph signing, uh, meet and greet. So they had a lot going on in those two days. But now, you know, they're out on the road. So Diana was down in in Mexico for AAA. Moose had a full slate. I know he was constantly on his phone, you know, talking with his agent about, you know, where they were going, what was going on. I mean, Diana's going to be, I believe, at Dynamite this week. Yeah. Uh, or she's going to be defending the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. And then right back here next week. But, you know, for us here, for our crews, you know, the team that I've assembled and Squirt Circle Expo, we got our street team out there. And it's about getting these things out. And as we right. talked about, going out there and actually talking to the people pounding that pavement selling the event packing that house the uh the meet and greet that moose did where was that hell because i saw the pictures i just couldn't tell where it was at yeah it was at a local comic, comic that, that's what I, I was gonna say maybe a comic book store. uh paper street trading co yeah. so you, okay. you got in that building base you know people can go you know go there they've got some other merchandise for sale and it was a tremendous turnout people were really really excited about it Does i was gonna ask send, what the turnout was does it does impact send people with them to like film the event and like because because these seem like they'd be great clips for you know promoting on social like i always say you know the the number one thing that impact needs to do is convince people that people like impact you know what i'm saying and so i feel like you know circulating clips of moose doing celebrity appearances think of wwe right wwe is the frame of reference for everything wrestling right they do make a wish okay i'm sure they go there with hella cameras because we all see it right when you're watching wwe you see pictures stills and video of the of the wwe superstars meeting the make-a-wish kids right like if they're doing promotions any and everywhere there's video of all of that so like to me i'm like you know impact is 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 promoting but you know part of promotion right like perception is reality right and again the perception of impact is that they're failing terribly you know like whatever and so they need to show people that they're out you know doing public appearances and people are showing up i, I people... agree the whole yeah. agree with you there uh, but I, I you know i would like to remind everyone there there is a reality of the situation those are financial budgets true true mm -hmm. uh you know you can you only have so much especially you know with a, a the talent of this roster you know it's not like anyone's getting beyond you know their wildest dreams rich with, with impact it certainly is you know part of a passion and, and so many people even inside the company wear multiple hats Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people that you will even see on screen are doing things behind the scenes to help yep. drive this machine. Right. Uh, so, so they're, they're using all their resources that, that they can. So we didn't have like impact represented camera crews with us. Um, I had, you know, my stuff there, we are recording. So I've got a lot of stuff to edit this week. I put out some raw footage, nice. but I want to get some stuff edited make sure we're, if they would want to use it for something that it's going to look professionally done. But I, that is something I actually suggested uh, that, that they team up. And it is, you know, it, this isn't just maybe something for impact, but again, like a MLW, especially like an NWA mm -hmm. where they don't have all of those financial resources. And I think it, you know, it means a little bit more if, if you do get involved with eight, hey, there's great local promotions everywhere that you're running that have those resources that are right. camera crews. Now it is, you're going to have to, you know, do your work to make sure that it's of the quality that you want to use, but you have all that built in. Right. So and again, now you're, now you're exciting communities about your returns because you're investing locally in those businesses. Now, what is the, uh, the, so we know, you know, you're talking about everything you, you've done and you've been doing that you're going to do now the squared circle side of it. Uh, what are some of those guys doing? um ed and his crew like what is separate from what your you know your mission is and what you're trying to accomplish well i i say you know it's all a joint effort really uh okay. we, we see the the finish line we know the goal and instead of trying to do our own things and taking our own directions it's about getting there together uh i think you know this week probably you know i, I i've really hit where i wanted to hit and making sure we were in that more broader spotlight general public getting on the espn radio 
getting with Fox News, getting uh, city beat coverage, getting local newspapers to come out and do some things with us. Uh, I got to follow up to have them actually at the event as well. This week is going to be very important in, in touching the public. So when it comes into touching the wrestling bubble, that's where they're going to be so instrumental because they're already connected there. Do you think it's harder to to get butts and seats for? I know it sounds like a weird question, but do you feel like it's harder because you you're talking about promoting your independent uh, company and everything? Do you think it's harder for a company like Impact to put butts and seats than it is for like the average independent show? Because I mean, I have indie shows here that do more people than Impact does. You know what I mean? And it's half local competitors and half. I mean, it's Rohit Raju, it's Jake something. It's some of the same dudes <laughs> that are on Impact, which is funny. They usually have one headliner, and then it's, you know. And, and, you know, a real quick question here, and there's a couple points I think that, that differentiate that could present those issues. What's the price for one of those local shows? Um, I mean, they can be 10, 10 20 30 bucks. Okay. Well, on the bottom end of that, an Impact bottom ticket's 25 Fair enough. So I could potentially go to one of those for 40 or 50 bucks over 100, 125, just getting in the door. Plus, I'm sure the concessions are a lot cheaper at that look show, and I'm seeing some of those same talents. True, true. I think in a bottom line, especially today, people are looking at those financials. I think you can get around that where people will forget about that. When you go to those shows, as you said, it's local. You see local sponsors, local involvement, other people that you know there. I think that's maybe something that's missing from an impact from, again, that level in NWA and MLW. Mm -hmm. I'm just starting to get into on my own shows because, you know, it was, okay, let's sell these tickets. We got sponsors. That's great. I'm evolving now where you got to get more involved and it means growing our bubble. Like for, I have an upcoming show on May 22nd, Cincy Slam. And right now I'm working, I've reached out to the local uh, Cincinnati chapter special special Olympics so what I've done instead of just asking the sponsors to get me money to help pay these talents I'm using portions of those to actually make sure that we're providing tickets for these for the special Olympic athletes oh, so now nice. they're getting an incredible experience we're more involving that organization they're helping us promote which is going to grow our gate outside of that itself you know and we're building a hell of an audience that's, you know, that so locals have that advantage of kind of manipulating those crowds because of the work there where, and I think that again is why it's so important for somebody like an impact to make sure they have somebody on the ground in these territories that they're really focusing on and trying to build. Yeah, I totally agree. And that's what, uh, that's why I found it kind of interesting when you said, well, you know, the middlemen were, were Heath and the good brothers uh, because, you know, fans always wonder, hey, when they hit New Orleans, they hit Kissimmee, Florida, whatever, did, are they hitting up people like yourself and companies like Squared Circle? And I thought perhaps maybe they were, but I'm kind of thinking maybe it hasn't been the norm so far because uh, they weren't the ones that reached out to you. So um, it's interesting, but it sounds like I would have to believe they're going to be ha- they're happy with the work and everything you're you're doing and putting forth. Like, is there going to be more working with impact for you know you guys in the future you think uh i hope so especially you know for for myself uh and absolutely you know this is something it's a great passion of mine you know when when you can take something that you love and call it work you've got it made Mm -hmm. and to to bring these things together i mean i love the live i love putting together live events I, i love bringing those to a public outside of that you know since four years old My greatest loves and passion of my life is professional wrestling. And now that I get to be involved in it in any sort of little way, and, you know, my journey has been a little bit different where it wasn't you go in there immediately start checking off your bump card. You know, it started through podcasting, (laughs) then into promoting, then, you know, and then intertwining my my real professional experience into this thing. Uh, But, you know, one of the things that drives me and excites me the most is to be able to do this professional wrestling. Right, right. Nope. Yeah, I mean, I can I can definitely hear your passion in it. That's uh, that's one thing for sure. 
I I'm not someone who could just go out and randomly talk to people and promote shit like that. Just, you, know, like, you don't want a flyer? Bleep you then. <laughs> yeah, not not my thing. But you know, you also talk about reaching out and having conversations with people because I mean, I can't think. God, I haven't been to the club in years, but there was all sorts of, and especially because I used to be in the music scene at certain clubs. You know, you would go there and then you'd see some artists on the outside just handing out flyers and you know, here's my new album and they all end up on the ground, end up in the trash because there's no personal connection being made. It's just here, take this and hoping someone does something with it and they never do. So, um, you know, you all, you obviously understand that. You have to get that engagement and, and, and at least get a little bit of their interest to give you a little bit of time. And your, your return rate on that could be very minuscule, but if you, but at each time, you know, if it's a hundred people in each time out, you can sway three of them. You're eventually going to grow that thing. Mm-hmm. It Rome's not built today. And that's really the mindset that a company has got to have. And, and you got to be, remain positive, believe in your product here. You know, and overall in professional wrestling, and I always tell, you know, the guys that I get to work with that are young and I'm one of them that will, you know, some of the local guys here, I'll no matter where they're, they're working at, I'll go help them shoot a promo and we'll go out the public and I can see that they're shy. Like, man, are they looking at me? Like, who cares if they're looking at you? Right. You want them to look at you. Yeah. You, you (laughs) sat there on this call ride and just told me about your dream is WWE or, you know, a television spot. And you're afraid of what, so we don't even know this, this a-hole, whether they're thinking or looking at you. No, you get up there and you believe it. Now I always tell them this, you know, and it's, one of the, you know, the reasons that I didn't really, and I wasn't really a big fan of his, but, you know, somebody, when you go back and like, Bret Hart's really one that stands out to me in this though. But I was recently watching some stuff with Stone Cold and it, especially, you know, that Undertaker's talking more about professional wrestling. You, you hear it inside of their voices. And if we're in pro wrestling, if you're a fan of pro wrestling, if you want this to be better and you're trying to convince someone else of it, especially though I tell the guys that are working here locally, if we don't believe this, no one is going to believe this. Right. Um, so I got a question. So when you, uh, so based on your experience, you know, promoting these events on this event on, on, uh, on behalf of impact wrestling, do you get the gauge that, do you, do you get, do you get the sense that based on, you know, the headway that you've made that this could potentially be like a very, uh, you know, fertile market for impact in the future. Um, like, how do you expect this event to do? Um, like, what, what, what do you, uh, do you think, like, I, based on like your, your, your experience doing this, right? Like, how do you project that, um, not just your relationship with impact, right? But like, do you see like some traction where it's more like, you, do you feel like, um, do you feel like this will be something where it's like, oh man, like AEW played Chicago 17 times this year, right? Like, do you, do you, do you get this sense that there could be um, something here for impact based on the work that you've done, the people you've talked to, the, um, you know, the way they've performed in their, in their obligations, um, you know, how, how do you think they'll do in this market going forward? Well, I'll say, I, you know, you got the OKI, the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana territory here is it, an absolute hotbed for professional wrestling. Uh, tremendous history. I mean, you, you can go just even current roster, the names that were born or had their serious time training here in, in this region. I think if you took the time and they made a, a certain loop out of this, obviously in any, any business, any industry, you don't want to oversaturate a marketplace. Uh, so they, they are going to have to look for some spots. You know, as you mentioned, like Chicago, it feels, I feel like AEW is going over the major event every six weeks. <laughs> right, uh, right, right. So, I, you know, but there's a populace there. Is that a spot for them? I don't know. You know, maybe that's already kind of taken over there. And then you go to the Northeast and it's heavy, you know, WWE. I know Ring of Honor for the longest time even struggled there, even based out of there. So if you could find those areas that really seem that are hotbeds that seem neglected, so why not? I mean, because they're already impacts already doing some work with OVW. So you got the Louisville, which is a hotbed. Uh, we've seen that wrestling fans through Squared Circle Expo that will go to the Indianapolis area. You know, if you can stretch out, WWE's got a stronghold on the Cleveland area, but if you can go into that and kind of make that loop there, 
occasional stops over into Pennsylvania to Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. Keep a rotation, absolutely. Now, there's some other ones out there. You know, they're based down there in Nashville. Southern wrestling has felt neglected there for a while. Uh, I'm sure spots throughout Texas, the West. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of open area out there that you can kind of set up and really, you know, stake out a home base at. That's kind of like, you know, KM Kevin Matthews, who runs WrestlePro, where, you know, was out of New Jersey. He found that hotbed in Alaska. And he runs, I mean, he runs that shit now. He's always showing photos yeah. on social media. I've I mean, seen some of the numbers up there. It's, it's, inc- it's crazy. Right. And, and, you know, another thing, you know, it's not just to say that, you know, people didn't know that impact wasn't coming here. Hell, I didn't realize this too. I just, I was doing some prep for um, you guys here and then get ready for tomorrow with Ben on the Monday locker room. NWA is running down the street from me a couple hours in Kentucky. Had no idea. Power struggle. Yeah. Tuesday power, yeah. <laughs> no clue that it was right there in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like marketing is everything, right? Like, I mean, like, um, you know, most people, uh, p- politicians promote all year long, right? But we only hear about the national elections. You know what I mean? For the most part, everybody gets riled up. Like you hear people, I listen to like politics podcasts, right? And they're like, well, the turnout was always so much lower for the midterms than the national election. And I'm like, yeah, because look what they spend on the national elections versus what they spend on, on the local, the midterms, right? So like, so I guess, you know, and you mentioned, you know, about impact working with, within a budget and that type of stuff. I don't want you to say anything to just, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm definitely not like setting you up here, but like, I don't want you to say anything that's going to potentially like jeopardize your relationship, but like based on like working with, with impact, do you get the sense that like they are really committed and interested in growing this product and this brand? And like, you know, cause I mean, I, I think they'd love for it to fall into their lap. Like, you know, if you were someone who could snap your fingers and sell out the 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 local fifteen thousand seat arena, you know, I'm sure they'd love that. They wouldn't turn it down at all. But you know, it's good. You got to spend money to make money, right? You know, like just just some of the things we've mentioned throughout this conversation. So, like, based on your conversation, and and if you don't feel comfortable saying it, we can no, talk about it offline. No, but it is, do, you, I, do you feel like they're they're, they're really? Um, really trying to grow this, yes, this brand. Really. I, I do. I, I think I, I believe wholeheartedly from the talents to, to their management, the passion, the desire, the drive is there. But again, you know, we, we realistically, you know, a lot of people sit there and it's easy to make comparisons with WWE's doing this, AEW's doing this. They have a godly amount of wealth that's being dedicated towards those efforts. And so when you fall into the range of an impact, uh, an NWA, an MLW or, you know, your top indies, whatever that case might be, you do, you have to be, uh, use the imagination, get outside of that box. Problem is sometimes inside it, even the best efforts might be misfires. And it's just a case of just repeat trial and error to see what's going to hit for you. I think, you know, he asked, we ask ourselves that a lot. And I think he asked the question because, you know, to go back to, I already brought up a couple times, like they, they didn't reach out to you. You know what I mean? Um, you didn't necessarily re- reach out to them, but there was a middle person. There wasn't like initially when it said, Hey, impact is going to work with squared circle expo and this and this, I'm like, you know, I put out a tweet. I was like, yo, this is the company to work with. Like they're really impressive. My impression was that they reached out to these guys. You know what I mean? So that's why sometimes we think like, are they really yeah, trying well, to like, you know, like we say, you know, we're saying a middle person in there, those middle people are impact employees. So they're out on the ground. So you got Heath mm-hmm. and the Good Brothers that are saying they found Squared Circle. They were a part of that where, you know, maybe somebody else inside of Impact was focusing elsewhere and said, hey, you know, this in this area, let's reach out to these guys. Mm-hmm. In, in the case of me coming on board, uh, yeah, I mean, that was an initiative. They, they didn't know who the hell I was or what I was doing. Yeah, uh, They didn't know my background or who I knew or who the, the learning trees that I've been under. But, you know, that gave me a little bit of an advantage. Right. That bar might have been a low for me, and I went for the damn home run, and I think I hit the thing. Nice. Uh, so, let, so let me ask you a question, a little, a, little, uh, a little maybe fantasy booking here. If you were, you know, if, if, if your phone rings tomorrow and it's, it's Ed Nordal, and he's like, yo, I love, the, I love your vision, and I want you to, you know, come over here and not blank check, but, you know, sell me a vision 
for how we can take the next step as a company. What would you do to have Impact Wrestling take the next step as a, as a company? And what would that next step look like? I think a lot of it is what we discussed here and realizing the limitations of the business, realize you're not going to come in and, and immediately go to those levels. You have to be honest in your outlets, what is available. And I think what's really missing inside of pro wrestling right now is an evolved type of territory system. Hmm. As Brian was saying, you can see many of these guys on your local Indies. Why aren't they immediate? Well, so inside of those bookings, you don't want to completely take control of those bookings, but I think you would want to dictate or maybe drive directions where, yeah, you're going to have two or three impact guys at a local show, but that endorsement is going to be with the impact logo on it. So you're immediately in the mindset with those fans there that they need to be, and maybe you intertwine some of the stories, let your belts go to those different things. Immediately, wow, somebody, holy crap, did you that impact title change hands or come up with some territory titles that we used to see like in the NWA. Mm -hmm. you know, there could be a Heartland Championship that runs the Midwest yeah. that is regularly going. So now you are, you are getting your local audiences buzzing. And with social media here now, it's, we got to make it easier for them to get the product and make sure we're putting it in front of them. I love that idea you just said. If they had like, and oh, what what would you call it? like the Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky area? Well, they yeah, had this, like a like a championship that was like based, you know, strictly in those areas. We used to were, have those. You had the Mid Atlantic yeah, champion. You know, we yep. had all of those. The the Western States Heritage Championship yes. <laughs> endorsed by that. Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Now we're yeah. putting the. But now we're really putting instead of the behind the scenes, what a lot of people don't see, where the majority of the fans are going to see, we're putting those promotions to work for us. Yeah. And it takes someone to coordinate that to make sure that you're not dealing with, you know, some shyster, you know, half-ass operation that's just coming up here. But there's some well-established promotions that's you, that around this country that we that we could probably sit down and easily come up with a list of who we could work with. Yeah, that's really really dope, man. I think um, I think like this has been like really fascinating, you know, getting uh, you know, getting getting an insight into you know, first of all, like I, I think your hustle is phenomenal. You know, like just uh, you know, finding finding that opening and you know, kicking down that door, getting that relationship built, and then you know, doing the actual groundwork. You know, getting out there, pounding the pavement, and um, you know, I hope, man, I hope you guys are turning away people at this show. You know what I mean? I hope it's like packed to the rafters, and I hope they look out. You know, look to you in the future to help promote um, all their shows. You know what I mean? Like now, are you based strictly in one area or would you work any area? Um, like what, what's, what's your territory? Well, I, I travel now for work. Uh, I, I mainly focus on uh, hospitality, small business marketing, bars, restaurants, hotel type resorts, live events. So I, I, I do, I do Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio myself. So really the territory that I was talking about mm -hmm. is what I do. But hey, I'm always up for travel. And I, uh, I'm single, kids grow, all of that. So I, I really don't have a lot of responsibilities, anything holding me down. I would have got there. You know, when it comes, when it came to this project and the wrestling, obviously, yeah, it's awesome. You, you get the rub. I got to work with one of the major promotions, you know, just not nationally, but a globally distributed, recognized, 20 years strong professional company here. But ultimately, you know, the thrill I got of it was inside of, you know, where I fell in love with pro wrestling, this territory, this area that I got to get in there, get my hands dirty and help it go to a new audience and, and get to some different platforms that maybe they didn't think were, were possible. And I think it's another, you know, it was nice of having someone that's going to be out there, do that legwork, hit the ground is it's just so easy, especially with a small crew. It can be overwhelming where you overlook some things or maybe just the connections aren't there. Yeah. Um, so let, let me ask you. I, I called in a lot of favors for some stuff. <laughs> That's dope, man. Like, and, and listen, like I said, I hope you guys, I hope you guys hit a home run. I hope you guys nailed it. And, um, I hope this is the best crowd impacts had all year. So, um, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to hear about the work you're doing because I, this is the work that needs to be done for impact. You know what I mean? Somebody's got to get out there and, and spread the good word about the product. Now, let me ask you a question about actual impact wrestling. Now we just are. Are you up to date on all the storylines and, and everything in the in the show? 
Uh, I am for, for the most part. Uh, sometimes I'll get a little bit behind okay. with just because of, you know, there's so much content that we consume, you know, being it, it, on the wrestling. It's, it's always weird saying that, you know, we're on the journalist side of this thing. <laughs> uh, one of the talking heads, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I'm fairly familiar with everything, you know, especially now. You know, for me, if you ask me to give you like 10 modern day, like dream matches, eight of them are going to involve the Briscoes. So <laughs> I'm right. very excited that they are involved. Um, so, so what, what would be your, if you could give me maybe two or three dream matches for the next big thing we're building to after, uh, the, the impact under seed shows after that, the next big thing we're building to is, uh, Slammiversary, right? Yeah. So what would be your two, two or three dream matches that you would like to see at Slammiversary? Wow, those those are tough. I think you know maybe not just matches, but moments. I, I was a little disappointed too to see that the inspiration was leaving. Yeah. I was really enjoying their work with Impact. Uh, I do like the influence. I like you know what's going on there. Potentially some big matches with them. Man, with the Briscoes being there, man, I I think with the missed opportunities with some other promotions inside of that, maybe not just a match. Uh, but there's got to be some sort of major payoff moment. I think you, you could really use the Briscoes to help grow that audience. Uh, so there's got to be full steam behind them. Yeah. 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 And uh, I think, I, you know, I think that's actually a great thing you mentioned. Do you think that actually adds a little bit of exclusivity that Impact typically doesn't have with a lot of talents? Is, you know, wh whatever the reason may be, the Briscoes are very popular and um, they haven't been contracted anywhere else so that could be a good thing for impact wrestling you know what i mean impact has kind of uh benefited from you know other companies you know misfires or or inability to work with certain other companies or, or whatever whatever may have you uh and <clears throat> they've they've been able to put some very popular talent on their show over the past couple of months and also i think i know another focus for them because you look at things that you're going to stand out with i think it really it if I, you know, Becky Lynch recently made some comments where she believed that Raw had the strongest women's division. She's out there. She's out there, Pippa. She's she's pushing her brand and all that. And I'm hard pressed if you go down the tail of the tape and line up all those rosters. This knockout division is incredible. Uh -huh. Oh, that's another conversation for another day. We go. <laughs> <laughs> we just get it out there. We, the we, we, we can get into We can get into that. We can get into that. Styles, man, it, it, you're hard pressed to, to to find a better one out there. Listen, I, 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 I can have the conversation, but just like, right, this, I'm, a, it's, it's a, I'm long winded, so I can't make a short argument. So <laughs> we're gonna, so we, we'll, we'll have to schedule a, uh, another appearance for you to make your case on the knockouts having the strongest women's division, but they do have a really good women's division. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've been, uh, you know, um, campaigning to BQ because he can make that decision. Uh, that they should have a knockouts their own standalone show. Um, so, like, I definitely think they could do it. So, um, so yeah, like, you, you preach to the choir on that one. But strongest women's roster? Yeah. Uh, I, but, I, look, <laughs> I look at potential, and I, I look at what they're – so they just need to hide that, highlight it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of – when they market it and promote the division, it's it's very reactionary. So – you know, once upon a time, you it's like you knew you were gonna turn and tune in TNA and see some badass X Division matches or some badass knockouts matches. Like they just knew how to market that so well, like in, in their branding. And now it's like, unless Becky Lynch comes out and says, "Hey, Raw has the best women's division," then they're more reactionary. Oh well, we're the knockouts. You know what I mean? Like it's they, it's they don't get a they just. I, I really feel like they could just improve the branding so much to to get the knockouts yeah, it's, to it's interesting you know, feature you part of the show the, like they once were. It's interesting you mentioned the branding in that because I even I noticed it a couple times when we were out and about over the couple of those days that they would say the term knockout and they would have to explain what that was. Mm -hmm. So I and I know some of the purists, but it's been there and it meant it was so important that, that it helped them stand out at a period. But I wonder if it is time to just go to that. It's women's wrestling. It's our women's division. Mm -hmm. And kind of just get away from the, the knockout aspect of it. A lot of times it's simplicity in, inside of itself, you know? Yeah. I don't yeah, think they'll but... ever ditch the name. <laughs> I, I, would I, I, I would give it consideration. 
Yeah. yeah. Listen, I've been I've been saying for the longest the X division to me, the concept is passe. It just it it, it is like um that's no disrespect to anybody who is currently right, an X division wrestler. The but I mean like is wrestling that style. Boom. Yeah. There you go. The X division was a thing when the main event was Hulk Hogan and you know and and Diesel. Okay, but everybody wrestles like X division style now. So it there's there's it ceases to be, you know, special, so to speak. So, um, you know, it's just come to a point of how close can you come to killing yourself? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, so they, I, I think, I think evolving is good. You know what I mean? And I think like they, they would, they could stand to evolve in a few ways. Totally agree. And it's not trashing your history to no, kind of move on all. from it. Nope. Totally agree. All right, BQ. I think that's 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 all the questions I got, man. But any, anything else you want to throw for real? Yeah, this, this was this was really cool. This was great. Um, definitely gave us a little bit of an, uh, insight. And I know as Impact fans, we appreciate you stepping out and doing that. So Impact, maybe two three months ago, put out, "Hey, we're we're building street teams." And I know all sorts of people that, oh yeah, we're we're down. We're gonna do this. Uh, you know, email here, sign up here, da, 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 no one's heard anything, you know, so people want to get out there and help, uh, but not everyone has the, you know, the tools to, to do so. So, you know, I'm yeah, sure I think everyone... you know, too, with that, I, I think behind the scenes, I, and I don't, you know, don't hold me to this a hundred percent, but I think they were switching some of their, because inside of their company, they have a very limited, I, I, it might just be Ross Foreman that's doing it. That is their kind of their PR marketing department. So, so they work with some consulting firms on that. And they might have been in a transition period right there. I do love the street team, but what is the value for the people? Who's my, because you've got to give those people the right tools, the right inspiration and direction. And there's someone that's got to, you know, have their thumb on that at, at all mm -hmm. times. Yeah. I'm, exactly. I'm available for hire. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like you said, single, no kids in the house. So that's living the dream right there. Yeah. Dream, loser, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right well rick man thank you so much this has been amazing thank you so much for your time um real quick tell all the people out there where they can find you in these social media streets yeah if you want to keep up with me personally uh very, very much more active on facebook it's, it's more friendly for the business that i am but you can find me at uh richard bronson vickery uh, you can find me on instagram which just got hacked by the way so i don't know if that'll be around i but, saw uh, your post about that <laughs> Twitter, uh, Twitter at the real RBV, but you can catch me on air. Uh, I am with the Hameen Media Group. You can get us at channelattitude.com. Again, that is channelattitude.com, Hameen Media Group. Uh, we're behind a paywall, so you ain't got to worry about any filters. Uh, nobody holding us back. Real take some of the best pros inside of the business. They come from a, a wealth of knowledge. A lot of OVW guys, but we got to sprinkle in el elsewhere on there. Stevie Richards, part of that group. Strangler Steve, one of the uh, top enhancement talents that's seen it all inside of professional wrestling. He is with us. We, we have got the vet, Jamie Williams, Ben Hameen himself. Uh, just a plethora of knowledge coming at you. It's the Hameen Media Group, Channel Attitude. Or, hey, give a follow to my own independent wrestling company. Uh, you can catch us across all social media at PWA Russell. And if you ever need anyone to step in and uh, talk AEW, myself or TW would uh, definitely be available for that. Sometimes it's good for us to step out of the impact bubble a little bit and Hell talk yeah. about other stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. Don't, very, don't, very, don't, very nice. So, so you guys, uh, are you going to be doing, are you going to kind of be sharing the spotlight with the, uh, well, I guess that wouldn't make any sense. They got bought by AEW. I was thinking yeah. it was with Ring of Honor and Impact, but. That doesn't make any sense. So just scratch that from the record. I'm an idiot. I had a whole, uh, I, I had, I had a whole diatribe on the uh, AWROH thing, and those diatribes will continue because it's kind of redundant. So <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, man, this is uh, this is so awesome, Rick. Thank you so much. We, um, you know, we may reach out to you in the future if you if you want to give us some insight on you know things uh, things that are in this scope of like promotion and the way impact is doing things yeah. you know uh, what they can do better yeah, especially and all that you stuff. know if if maybe uh, i know you guys do weekends but maybe the next time you're free to get something on i'll, I'll be busy with the two days of shows next week but maybe do a follow up let you know how the crowd was what definitely you know. are you yeah. are you going to be in and attendance at, and... at the shows yep okay great man so that you know that we might do that we might do that get a little uh, 
behind the scenes. Obviously, nothing is going to, you know, jeopardize your personal relationships with Impact. But uh, yeah, that, that, that could be cool. Cool little follow up. Uh, have have uh, your people hit BQ's people and we'll talk to the people <laughs> <laughs> and make some good some good podcast content. Awesome. It was, a, it was an honor, guys. Thank you so much. Keep it doing what you do. Thank, Thank you, Rick. You. All right, so we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to get into some of the impact news of the week. Um, BQ, just tell us, uh, you know, real quick, was there was there any things that really popped out to you um, from the, the world of impact this week? Yeah, let, let's talk a few things here. Um, obviously, we did this interview first, so uh i don't know we'll, we'll see how long this segment goes maybe we'll talk impact maybe not you know we, we've already discussed um in the past that some of these cool fact episodes might not be impact reviews mm-hmm. you know so um but i do want to talk some some new stuff uh okay so that we know that the inspiration this is contract stuff contract stuff so we know that the inspiration not the inspiration the inspiration i get them and the influence always confused the inspiration uh gone from impact gone from wrestling apparently um booker t had some comments on that because he never has anything positive to say about impact um, <laughs> impact it, wrestling ruined the inspiration oh i thought they were going to be great <laughs> well yeah actually so we'll get to it first so he, he was basically saying he, he i mean what i understood from the press release was that the inspiration was stepping away from wrestling and we're likely going to pursue other Right. opportunities um they are they are, are past and actresses and stuff right they're past the point past the point where they need to wrestle you right. know um i mean you see uh, i brought up uh danielle monet's summer ray before like she's just mm-hmm. straight up a full-time model now like she hasn't laced up a single wrestling boot since wwe let her go Thank so God. you know so there there's some um you know avenues for these ladies where they don't have to take bumps anymore and they can make you know good money so that's where that's how i understood it i was like i think these girls want to step out and see what uh what what this face these faces can do for them you know what i mean um and i'm sure through their agents they already had all sorts of opportunities lined up and they have an idea of what's available out there for them otherwise they wouldn't you know be stepping away you know booker t's oh well you know impact doesn't have the same kind of crowds and the same time it have a tv and the same atmosphere and the pay is not the same and then you you know you travel just to go make more make less money and da 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 da. um all that is like true you know um (laughs) but no one's gonna you know you can pay someone good money without paying them wwe money right you know um no one's gonna pay you wwe money and i think every wrestler knows that when they leave so um you know, that's why you had guys like Braun Strowman at the time, like, oh, well, I'm, I'm charging $5,000 for a booking, you know, <laughs> uh, that was a little much, but I, um, you know, some people try to match that money. Some people, some people who have brains be like, okay, I'm not going to make that money, but you know, right. here's my price or whatever. And I think that's where, you know, impact can look at a team like the inspiration be like, Hey, we can't pay you what WWE did, but we can pay you very well for six months. Right. You know what I mean? And, and that appears to be what happened. Um, this is less than six months. This is about four months. Yeah. You know, so. Um, but I was shocked by it, dude, because I was I was actually under the impression. And I know we have this. There's that disconnect all the time. Who signed? Who's coming and going? Mm-hmm. No one knows anymore. Right. Like, at least with MLW's. Uh, online marketing, they, they kind of make it clear, hey, we have our roster and then we're going to cycle some people in. Like they, they have a way of at least letting you know that, hey, when Killer Cross comes through, he's not signed. Right. You know, um, Impact doesn't have that clear distinction. I wasn't under the impression these girls were here. Like I didn't think this was, a, I'm trying to think, you know, Jay White with the Bullet Club coming and doing a few months and leaving. Like I, I really thought they were part of the show going forward. So, I wasn't expecting that one at all. And I texted you. I was like, yo, inspiration's gone. You're just like, no. <laughs> that was a sarcastic note. I probably didn't come across <laughs> in the text. But uh, <laughs> I mean, like when I saw um, when I saw the announcement that they were leaving, I was like, all right. But um, but I also felt like, you know, they probably said, you know, look like, you know, we went from performing like this. Here's the thing. 
and I, I, I here's one of the things I, I learned, um, even though like Total Divas is a super fake reality show, but like l- l- from, from watching that show and then also from like JTG's book and just like different little stories that you pick up, like um, a big part of being a WWE superstar is being a star. Like a lot of people get into that because they like being a star. Like a lot of the women who, you know, um, who were WWE divas, like, you know, they do that because they want to get like Chanel bags and, you know, all this, you know, like they want to be dressed like movie stars. They want to be on, you know, worldwide platforms and all that other stuff. And like that makes taking the bumps and all that stuff worth it. You know, uh, Rick, like Rick was just saying, it's like there's a, throughout Impact Wrestling, if you work at Impact Wrestling, Part of it is a passion project. And, you know, a lot of people are trying to get their brand name up so they can get a big payday from AEW or WWE. Um, a lot of people have already made their money in AEW or WWE, and they're just at a, at a point where they're trying to just keep making some money so they don't got to, like, dip into their stash. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's if you don't have – if you, one, have better options – or you don't have a passion for, you know, doing the grimy work of trying to be a wrestling star, then like impact's not for you. Okay. Impact's not for you. And, um, the, 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 in what was it? The inspiration, the inspiration, like, listen, if they looked around impact and was like, all right, look, the crowds, not what we're used to. We're not being treated like stars. Um, we're doing, you know, much more of our own promotion. The company's not doing the promotion for us. And, um, and, and, you know, the pay is not what it was, um, you know, like, we're like, well, why, why would we keep doing this? And then, you know, what are they going to do? Go to AEW. AEW is a much more wrestling intensive situation and they wouldn't fit in there at all. They'd stick out like a sore thumb in AEW. So, um, I don't know, like, so listen, they're, they're, they already kind of present themselves as models anyway. Why not? Why not? Right, right. And, the truth is, once you're on that WWE platform, you have a following where you can just, you know, if you know how to how to uh, how to uh, monetize a following, then you're good. You're good. And I think that, um, it, you know, they they post, you know, modeling pictures, you know, sexy pictures. I'm doing my air quotes here online all the time. And so, like, if that's it, and and by the way, that's a great way to monetize your your following. So if they can do that and don't have to, you know, be a part of a, of a, of of a, of a mildly promoted wrestling show, then why not? You know what I mean? Like it's less physical. You don't got to worry about somebody dropping you or falling on you or, or, or anything like that. You know, you don't have to do unnecessary travel and you know, why not? Like if, if you're not impact right now is a stepping stone promotion. People are there because they're trying to get somewhere else. And um, that that's that's almost universal, right? Um, a lot of people talk about you know re-signing with Impact and turning down offers to go elsewhere. That may be true, it may not. You know what I mean? They, they could just be right. holding out for their next re-up or whatever. Um, but people in the situation like the uh, the inspiration, I don't know where else they were going to go. You know, other than OnlyFans. But I yeah. don't know. Like I just I, I don't know what else was was I don't know what they were going to use impact as a springboard to, you know. So um I, I to just see them leave is not surprising at all. I, I feel like it had to do with their wrestling legacy because they I say legacy, but you know, the reason they chose to come to impact is because there was a legit tag team division with, with belts, and that's something they wanted to do. Granted, they won in WWE, they won those belts, but you know. They wanted to have a program to win tag team titles. You know, that's what it came down to. And Tennille does modeling all day and travels all over the place. Like this influencer thing isn't, isn't you know, just a gimmick. So, and they're very close. So I'm sure she's opening up all sorts of, you know, opportunities for them and everything. So it does bother me though when someone brings up the pay thing because it's like, okay, Impact might be like, hey, we can't pay you $8,000 for the month, but we can pay you two thousand dollars or two sets of tape for two days right. you, you know to some of these big bigger names you know what i mean and then they have you have you got the rest, rest of the month to do conventions um whatever the case and they you know and and have a little time off so 
you know, I, I, I just hate when I see shit like that as old, oh, the, the pay isn't the same. Like con- companies like Impact, NWA, these, like they never said they were paying living wages to people. You know what I mean? Like they're, some people do receive that, um, but not everyone does. Like everyone tried to clown NWA when Zicky Dice, he went public because like, oh, I only made a thousand dollars a month there. Well, okay. So you on average work two days a month. They paid you $500 a day. You know, it's all in context, you know, you know, but, um, right. yeah, it just bothers me when they, they bring up stuff. I just think they just know there's big money for them elsewhere. They're, they're still very young, you know, mm-hmm. there's just big money elsewhere. So speaking of big money though, um, so the other, the impact contracts that are coming up, uh, this is just via the dirt sheets and everything is the good brothers. Uh, that actually came July. They actually dropped a date online saying July 11th was their last day. Um, it's been the longest two, been the longest two years of my life watching them on impact television. I freaking tell you that. Um, it, but the article is also saying they have a big, big money deal, which we all, we all assume that. Um, but that the two sides are very far apart in negotiation. So it's interesting when you, when you come somewhere and you're like, okay, I'm going to sign, you know, a big money deal. And then the, it comes around and you're like, okay, now I want more, you know, I just, I'm always curious about these negotiations. Like is impact like, Hey, well, unless impacts low balling you like, Hey, we want to pay you less. You know, what, what is a problem? If they're like, Hey, we'll pay you the same thing. You know? Well, I mean, most people, you know, most people don't see like sticking at the same salary as like, okay. Like when, when, when most people's contract is up, they want some sort of a raise. And especially like the world we're living in now, the cost of everything is going up. You know what I mean? And it's crazy. Like the cost of everything is going up and the quality is going down. I went to the grocery store today and like the damn paper bags are like tearing as you try to carry them. Yeah. <laughs> because the even the paper bags at the grocery store are cheaper now than they used to be. They're made more cheaply than they used to be. So it's just crazy, man. Like the world we're living in, there's less and less value in everything. And... I think if you're um, the good brothers are probably a little bit delusional about the value they provide to impact wrestling. Like, you know, again, for me, someone who's not a, a, a fan of new Japan uh, I didn't follow their career from new Japan. So like they never brought anything special to the show for me. I never watched them and was like, Oh man, this is the team I love from New Japan. Yes, do that thing from the yeah. show with the yeah, woo. and like, the, no, the one, know. two, three, and the, yeah. right, exactly. So, um, and I, I think that um, I think that that's a major divide in the non WWE wrestling fan. Um, it, it's like there's the people who watched New Japan and ROH and and didn't, and it's like the people who did do that they act like no one else, like they act like everyone else should know all these people and all their storylines. And this is one of the major things that just annoys me about AEW each and every week is like all of the stuff they do where they just act like I'm just supposed to be into it and you refuse <laughs> to sell it to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like the Good Brothers is a lot of that. Like they've had some some better matches lately. Like I liked you know, uh, a lot of stuff they did with uh, Juice Robinson and um, and uh, uh, David Finley. And um, I like the stuff they were doing with um, the Gorillas of Destiny. That was more interesting. But as you see, all that stuff is linked back to New Japan. So outside of the concept of New Japan, like, like what are they really bringing to the table? Yeah, I mean, so, they showed up on AEW television and no one cared. Right. They weren't, you know, oh, the good brother. Like, they didn't, couldn't give right. two shits. Right. They're one of the one more annoying parts of the show for a lot of people. Exactly. You know, so but and yeah, and you, you got a point too. You know, sometimes, you know, it's negotiation time, you want more. Like, Jesus Christ, uh, about six months ago, my job, everyone wanted to go on strike because our collect our bargaining agreement was up and they're like, Well, we want a couple more bucks an hour. And I'm like, dude, I, I'm happy with what we make, dude. Like, I'm not trying to do all this fucking shit. And some people are like, No, you know, our our time has come, it's time to ask for more. I'm like, okay. So, I mean, you know, I guess that's just how it is sometimes. Um, I mean, I know that's why we're going to have, you know, Rohit eventually here on the channel, but I I know he wanted, he asked for more. I know he wasn't asking for a million dollars, but he was, he said, I know my worth now. I've, I've, 
I think with someone like Rohit, they're like, hey, I started from this dude, Hakeem Zayn, with a freaking leather vest mm-hmm. who in my first promo got attacked by, I forgot who attacked him. The first time he ever opened his mouth, it was like AEW, like he just got attacked. It, it was more one of those like, it wasn't even a storyline regarding him. It was just a storyline to get over the person who attacked him. Like they were going crazy backstage attacking people type of thing. He came from that to going through the Desi hit squad where they didn't know where that was going. And then gets to the point that he did. And then it's time to re up. He's like, Hey, I, I, I bring this value now. You, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't feel like the good brothers could say that. Like they, they're, <laughs> I haven't seen them improve the impact product since arriving. No, exactly. To now. That's the, like, like the, they haven't improved the impact product, not for me. And I haven't heard anybody who says they, they do. But also, I don't really care anybody who says they do because, like, honestly, I, I say the same thing that I say to, like, the Adam Cole zealots, right? Which is, like, I'm not saying Adam Cole isn't good. I'm saying I don't see what it is y'all are so excited about. And you, you refuse to admit that nothing he's done since being in, you know, whatever promotion we're watching him, him in now – has been enough to make someone a fan who wasn't already a fan. Like beyond Adam Cole, baby, what else is there? You know what I mean? I've been saying that and I will continue to say that. Like that's that's just, that's it. And the Good Brothers is the same thing. If you're not into the magic killer and a one, two, three and a just too sweet, then like, what else is there? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, like Carl Anderson is supposed to be this great wrestler. I haven't seen it. No, you know what I mean? No. I, I haven't seen it. And like, they're supposed to be super cool and funny. I haven't seen it. Dude, so they're not I, funny. You know, I, I stopped watching WWE right around the time they showed up. I was still watching when AJ showed up. And I actually got... That's what started turning me off because he started, you know, his very first time coming to the ring. He tell, says into the microphone, I should have... Or the camera, I should have been here the whole time. Yeah. And it was taking little, like, TNA shots that I didn't right. really appreciate. And I... Yeah. But as I was stopping watching as far as being a full-time viewer the good brothers had were, were coming in and um i remember people being so excited about them i watched a little new japan at the time so i was like ah, oh, these guys are, are kind of cool and um i would in spots watch their segments like the ones where they're dressed up as doctors and all that shit and i was like these right. motherfuckers are not funny and i thought it was just some like wwe humor like wwe writers you know but then they came over to impact and it was that same, like really, really bad humor. Now yeah. they're, they're far from that now. Like they got really serious in the stuff with violent by design. And that was pretty good. Um, you know, now they're doing the bullet club. I hate the bullet club, but you know, they're doing that and it's, it's, they're more likable than mm-hmm. they probably were before, but they're just, I, I listen to their, I shouldn't say I listen. I have listened to their podcast a couple of times. I don't like it at all. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm the world's best podcaster. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. People might say, well, they're better than you. Like, okay. <laughs> I I don't enjoy it, man. I think it's like really, really bad. Um, yeah. And the other day, Moose was on. I was like, oh, dude, let, I'll listen to Moose. And it's a very loose podcast. Like, they just say whatever they want. And I know that I curse on this podcast quite a bit. Um, I'll say in the first three to four minutes, and I challenge anyone to, if, if you think I'm exaggerating here? Look up the podcast. Moose probably said, "Fucking." <laughs> in the first four or five minutes, he must have said it 30, 30 times, dude. Wow! Every word out of his mouth was like it, it's almost like, "Hey, you come here, you can talk however you want." Yeah. He came and he was just fucking fuck this and fu-. I mean, yeah. I turned it off, dude. I was like, I mean, again, I know that I curse, but. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's no content in what was being said in that podcast. It was just a bunch of saying, just, just cursing. Like I, I challenge anyone to look it up. The, the talking shop with moose. Like you can't get through the first like four or five minutes and you're just like, dude, I'm done. Right. <laughs> well, that's not know. good. <laughs> yeah. I haven't enjoyed their time. Um, at first I thought they felt like a big deal. You know, when they first showed up, I thought they were going to bring eyes to the product. And I don't, I don't think they have. So, Right. I and mean, I think they really hurt the tag team division. I think, you know, teams like uh, Reno Scum, Triple Excel, they were around at the time. And there was one or two others. Like, 
you wrestle the good brothers, you just lose really fast. Like when mm-hmm. their debut match against Reno Scum, it wasn't even competitive. Like they just brought those guys to be to get squashed and it, they didn't do anything for them. And then they ran through the tag team division and it was just like, what the hell do we do with them now? Then they had the titles forever. You know, so um and the, but the point is at the end of the day, the point is that none of it was exciting. You know what I mean? Like that, and right. that's what it comes down to. You know, we just finished talking to somebody who was, you know, talking about the um, you know, the the effort in promoting um promoting uh impact wrestling um is you know like we, we got to grow the wrestling bubble in order to grow impact wrestling that that was telling me that the people here ain't effing with it okay and so like the best part of the problem right is there has to be something on there that people want to see right and, and so the good brothers have been there for two years now and haven't moved the needle and honestly like i don't know what else there is to say we've seen it we've seen the act and it doesn't move me and if if it moves impact to cut a check then more power to them but um, I'm just not impressed. I don't Even know. Tony Khan's like, we don't need him on our show anymore. There it is. They, there it is. Know? Like Tony Khan is like, yo, I, I hate to name call, but like, listen, if Dixie, if Dixie Carter was a money mark, what the hell is Tony Khan? Like yeah. this dude is just out. He is so like, just trying to like, you know, refulfill his, you know, ring of honor fandom, his new Japan fandom, you know, with his own TV show. And, and that shit is going to run out. And so like a, a big part of that, is like he wanted to get in all the faces, right? He wanted to get in the, the good brothers for the bullet club, you know, whatever stuff with the elite. And like, all right, cool, man. So he's like, we got that. We don't need it anymore. And that's, again, what else do you bring to the table? At some point, they got to do something other than we were in the bullet club in New Japan. And honestly, we have talked about this too long. I can hear the people <laughs> dropping off just talking about <laughs> the, um, the, 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 the good brothers. Um, because the, what, what honestly, like, bro, they're really not that interesting. If we're keeping it real, it's 2022. Um, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson are not the, in the wrestling world. Like, what are they doing of interest? If, if they want to make headlines, they better drop a podcast talking shit about Triple H. That, that's it. Because I, I, who cares? Honestly, it's 2022. When it comes to the Bullet Club, I'm interested in Jay White. And I'm hoping that Chris Bay stops eating all the pins. Other than that, like, come on, bro. It's 2022. <laughs> so another name that um, contract is coming up is Brian Myers. That was an interesting one to me because they just started this major players thing um, online. And I mean, not online on the show. I sent out a tweet said this is going to be the best part about impact for a while. Because the first episode, when they kind of did their semi-debut as a team and they attacked Mickey James backstage, it was interesting. I was hooked. And then the two or three weeks after that, always ends up with them on their asses. Brian Myers is wrestling in a tables match um, against Dobby Morrissey here. He's going to end up on his ass. So it's like, it's almost like they're treating like, hey, you guys might be leaving here. So Mm. we're just going to beat you on your way out the door instead of... You know what? I feel like they've been slow building to this major players thing coming together. And I think they're going to have, have a nice little run. I'm not saying that, that any of the, that they're going to end up with anything higher than the tag team titles, but I feel like there's a fun run to be had here. And here's what's going to be the key. Can they move the needle? Can they move the needle? I think there's a great opportunity for this group here in impact wrestling. They've been doing a lot of fun stuff on the indies. And if they can move the needle for impact wrestling, I think there is, um, I think the floodgates will open for them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you know, again, based on the conversation we were just having with Rick, you know, Impact's not out here spending all the money. Like, we already knew that, but we also know they have money. We know that there's money there. And I think that if you can get the right group, the right to the right act to show that they can draw in more of an audience, I think that, you know, Anthem will turn on the money faucet. And so I think there's a great opportunity there. So I'd highlight them, man. I, I think they got a fun thing going. Like, you know, uh, Cardona's annoying. You know, Brian Myers, uh, he, he's a good bad guy. Chelsea Green, she's even more fun as a bad guy. So I, I like them. Um, and I, I hope they, you know, keep giving those guys some love because I think there's, you know, I think there's a lot there. I think there's a whole lot there. Uh, they just can't be losing. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, Jonah's contract looks like it's done. Uh, he's going to have a Monsters Ball match with PCO. Why? I mean, 
well, can we beat this, is, this dead is horse? Gonna be, right. They beat, they've beaten the horse to death. And I think, but I think what they're going to do here is I think they're going to finally give PCO his win over Jonah because PCO is going to be there. Right. And so I think they're going to give PCO his win over Jonah and this will be their writing Jonah off TV because he's killed yeah. PCO five times. Right. He's right. Killed. So maybe there's going to be an interesting way that PCO, because it's a monster's ball match. I'm just like, what the fuck, man? Didn't they already have a no DQ match or something? Right, right. Like, what yes. else is there for them to really do? Yeah, so, um, I mean, they have they put on good matches. Don't get me wrong, but um, maybe they're going to have some interesting way of getting Jonah, I mean, a PCO over, and he might bury Jonah for good, you know, like he was doing a couple of weeks ago. But I'm just, I, I don't think anyone expected Jonah to be around past whatever he was doing here. And he has done excellent work. Horrible theme song, but besides that, right <laughs> um, really good matches really good promos i mean you know he, he was good i just i don't care about the match uh I, I don't want them to be AEW where they're like AEW used to never do rematches and now they do rematches until the baby face wins um <laughs> so they made an exception this past week because serena deeb actually beat uh Kara Shida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's beat her like three out of the four Which matches. Which I wanted like, her to win, by the way. Like, I, I, I think Serena Deeb is, is really dope and she'll be a great contender for Thunder Rosa. They're going to beat the crap out of each other. That's going to Yeah, be that's going to be a lot of fun. That's what I wanted, too. But that was like the one exception. Usually, yeah. and I think it started with Cody, like, rematch until I win, you know? So, yeah. um, so we're going to, we got, uh, I think, one more here. Uh, we'll, we'll two, we'll get into, and then we'll probably wrap this up. Um, Willie Mack is one of them, which is, you know, I, I've been saying him and Swan should have won the titles at some point. You know, I, th- I feel like you had to do that to keep Swan kind of hot um, or to, to attempt to heat him back up. Uh, so I guess what the article was saying was that his next contract, he was supposed to be receiving a significant pay raise, uh, basically a living wage, uh, six digits, six figures, sorry, six digits, uh, six <laughs> figures. And then they decided they didn't want to do that anymore. So, mm. um, so I don't know. Is he out? Is he gone? Or, you know, the article also said he might be doing her appearance going forward. You know, I don't know. I was actually watching one of their matches recently. I mean, I, I'm like, man, Willie Mack just feels like someone who's going to be done soon. Yeah. Um, just because they don't keep people that long. Yeah. Uh, yeah like, I, I've actually been thinking the same thing about Tennille Dashwood. Like, that's the mm. one, even though that she's a champion. That's one of the names that I'm like, dude, I'm just waiting for any random month here to hit. And they're like, Tennille Dashwood is done. Because they yeah. just don't keep people that long. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so I don't know. What do you think about Willie Mack if he's gone? Or I mean, I mean, like, no no one's made me care about Willie Mack. Nobody, nobody has made me care about Willie Mack. Like, I, you know, um, he's a amazingly talented. But, um, you know, they gave him the X Division title for a short time. And that was really it. They had, you know, I think him and Rich Swan are an outstanding tag team. Uh, but like you said, they should have had belts a long time ago. Um, Willie Mack will be gone. And like, I, I hate to say it, like, why will we even notice? Why will we yeah. even notice? Like, if you didn't see that, the, that notice that Willie Mack's contract's coming up, would you be thinking about Willie Mack? <laughs> right. Okay. So there it is. And I got love for Willie Mack, um, but it's just, they're not doing anything with him. So why would I care? You know what's wild? Because the wrestling community is so funny, man. I've talked a lot about when I went to the Lucha Underground Impact show, which I hated. Um, there was a match, which was Killshot, who we know now is Swerve Strickland. It was Killshot and Willie Mack, who was the Mack. <clears throat> Excuse me, as a Lucha Underground team. They wrestled L- LAX, Santana and Ortiz, who is now on AEW over is all hell. This crowd, because it was a largely pro lucha underground crowd they were so far so behind willie mac dude right. they could couldn't give two shits about santana and ortiz right like those were a couple of nobodies to them you know right. and it was all strictly because willie mac was a part of the cool thing lucha underground and santa lax was part of impact which wasn't cool and it, it's just so funny because now you really look at those guys and you're just like man you can't even picture a world where this crowd is just cheering on Willie Mack over right. over these guys you know mm-hmm. but again it's it's the it's the impact stink right you know what I mean it's it's the impact stink and again this is on impact 
Um, and you know, if, if you guys are wondering why this rewind our conversation with Rick and it'll tell you everything you need to know about impact and the effort that they're putting into promoting their stars, you know what I mean? Like, look, man, like you're not gonna, um, as, as much as like, you know, AEW has like, you know, uh, zealots, you know, who are, you know, ride or die for all things AEW. A big part of that is because Tony Khan spends the bread to make AEW pop. You know what I mean? Like they didn't just do this on a shoestring budget. So you got to spend money to make money and, and impact needs to promote its wrestlers. You know what I mean? They need to promote its shows and, and all of that stuff. So, you know, there's your answer, you know, like if, if you want these people to, if you want fans to care more, you got to promote more. Yeah. And I do want to say real quick in regards to when we had Rick on, I, I feel even more confident now that impact hasn't been doing this kind of stuff in other cities in yeah, other markets 100 percent, because like you said he had to there had to be a, a a connection and then he had to do the reach out himself and you know pitch and sell that he was able to do this job so they weren't like they it's not like they have like a running list of the people who can you know get a big crowd popping for them yeah and come and, and to, just having that conversation i'm like yo they might be on to something here you know we moved moved to this market and we talked to the local whoever whoever's local that does you know they try to do prom, uh, local promotions before that didn't really work what about some of these markets that have these um conventions right you know so like i said this was indianapolis middle of nowhere uh packed with people dude and i mean they must have had maybe 40 40 wrestlers last time i went like there was over 70 this time dude like they had to open up another room real nice hotel uh, and then they put on a card with some of the wrestlers on the, you know, that came and then some nobodies. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's packed, there you know, it is. so there it is, you know, that might be some magic they can tap into there. Um, the last one we're going to talk about here real quick, uh, Maria Canellas Bennett. So she looks like she's supposed to be, she was, she was apparently done after rebellion. Mm. So she's probably doing uh, her appearance at the moment. I was excited when she came on with Bennett because when she was with TNA before, like she was a big part of the show and now she barely talks. She's insignificant on the show. Mm -hmm. um, well, and Maria can never, never, ever be insignificant. So. Yeah. I'm sorry. My, my bad. But, uh, <laughs> I'm coughing here, man. I'm struggling to talk, but, um, <laughs> but it's, she clearly wants to do something with this ring of honor thing. Mm -hmm. uh she wants she wants to be involved and now she's downplaying it because people are like oh you're you know hard on for, having a hard on for a job like she started downplaying no i just want to be involved like she wants to be over there i think she wants to do something creative that will actually be seen and anybody who's a creative wants their stuff to be seen if you are busting your butt to write and shoot and promote and put together something you want it to be seen you want people to like it. You know what I mean? Again, as someone who's an artist, like you understand, right? Like you spend the time to make the music, you like it to be heard. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So like, I don't blame her for wanting to be on a major platform. And if Impact wanted to use her, they'd be using her. Like you said, they use her, you know, as like a, a background bit player. And she's better than that. She's a good talker. She looks good. She does good, good work uh, as part of the, um, as part of the in-ring act. And so, yeah, man, like if they're not using her, that's on them. You know what I mean? That's on them. I think she's dope. I'm a big fan of her work. I'm a big fan of the way that, you know, she looks amazing after having two kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like to me, that's just like some real badass type, 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 uh, you know, type of stuff. And I'm just, I'm a big fan of Maria and her work. So I'd love to see more of her on the show. So, you know, if yeah. they're not utilizing her and if, you know, uh, if, if, if ROH is giving her an opportunity to produce the women's division, then yeah duh take it go yeah H have fun get paid right and, and she's also has her own promotion now that she just started a uh, mm. women's promotion nice. so obviously you're going to want to be involved with a bigger platform to help get that popping and off the ground so hell yeah you know um I, <clears throat> god i'm sorry i keep i do my best to never cough on podcasts but i'm struggling today um let me ask you real quick and then we're going to wrap this up um, if you guys wanted to check out an impact review, you know, that just, sorry, we had a long episode today. I think you guys got more value out of that interview than, um, us talking about, uh, you know, paying 40 bucks for a Josh Alexander ver versus Moose match and then getting it for free four nights later. So, um, 
the, but we will talk about the uh, the Briscoes. They made their debut on the show. They actually got a good match out of Heath and Rhino. Um, they're probably going to become the Impact Tag Team Champions because that's history says that's what they're going to do. You right. look at the inspiration. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Look at even if you want to say Kenny Omega. I mean, you you look at all these outsiders coming in, um, shiny new toys. Like they're going to win the belts. I don't know what to tell you. They're not bringing the Briscoes in to to put over Violent by Design. Right. So, um, what what do you what do you think about uh, you know, them showing up? They they now you mentioned some exclusivity. They actually did do it NWA uh, loop. So wow. they've been there. <laughs> um, I mean, listen, you could you could tell people love them. You could tell people love them, and their their energy is great. And I think they'll be a great addition to the show. I think there'll be something people can you know come to the show and cheer for. And I think Impact needs that energy of you know of of seeing people that they really are excited about on their show so i'm a fan of that i've never really been an roh guy so i haven't really seen much of the briscoes work but i know they're very popular and impact needs acts that are popular yeah exactly i and i feel like they're they could be move, needle movers a little bit more than the good brothers granted they don't have that same name power name value but um they have more dedicated fans you know what I mean? It might be a smaller group, but it is a more dedicated group that would follow the Briscoes wherever they go and watch them. Yeah. To where the Good Brothers are more of like, I guess you could just say there's a more of a casualness to, you know, right. their right. audience. Like no one is right now just like I'm just hardcore Good Brothers guy. Like that just doesn't exist. Right. So, and if Impact was smart, then they would use the Briscoes and their popularity to put over some talent that you know are like Impact homegrown talent that they want people to see as impact people, but who am I kidding? That's not how we do it. <laughs> uh, all right, man. I think that's all I got for tonight, man. You got you got anything else on your on, on your uh, menu you want to talk about? Uh, negative. Hopefully we'll get a um, mailbag going soon. Hopefully yes. we can make that happen. Yes. Um, if people really want to hear an impact review, it might come, you know, come kind of late, but if, Enough people are like, yo, we really want to hear some thoughts on the show. Then I'll, I'll do something quick and solo. If people people hit me up and they want that. But uh, I think we fed the people very well. There's a review up so. on ImpactWrestling.com. Uh, Read that for your review. And, it, you know, let's let's talk about it in the Impact Engagement Group. BQ, tell the people where they can find you out here on social media. At BQ Speaks on Twitter. Uh, Impact Lounge on Twitter. Impact Lounge on Instagram. Impact Lounge on Facebook. Uh, and you can find me at TW Talking About on your social media of choice. You can also follow my podcast at Talking About Pod. I had a hella busy week, uh, NFL draft, a whole bunch of stuff going on. So I did not get a pod up this week, but there'll be something coming back very soon. Um, yeah, man, uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I t- tweet me, I tweet back. Um, you know, make sure that you like, comment, rate, and subscribe. And the best thing you can do if you like this show, you want to support this show, tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation. For BQ, I'm TW. Peace.